This is Daryl W. Perry, host of Free Talk Live. This November, I'll be running in the world's biggest and most popular marathon, the New York City Marathon. And I've accepted a spot on Team Innocence Project because I'm a passionate supporter of their work. Since 1989, 353 people in the United States have been exonerated by DNA testing, including 38 who pled guilty to crimes they did not commit and 20 of whom served time on death row. The Innocence Project provided direct representation or critical assistance in 180 of these cases. With your help, the Innocence Project can help even more people who have been wrongly convicted. As part of Team Innocence Project, I am raising awareness about wrongful convictions and raising funds to help free the innocent. I've already paid the race registration fees. However, to secure my spot on Team Innocence Project in the New York City Marathon, I need to raise $3,500 by November 1st. You can support the Innocence Project and help me secure my race entry by going to run.freetalklive.com. Because for as great as Ron Paul is, and for all the wonderful things he says, well, unfortunately, (laughs) hey, there's a reason we have a couple of Seas of Liberty episodes specifically dedicated to destroying the Paul legacy. (laughs) Because, well, you know, it was a great man thing. Oh, Ron Paul can save us. Ron Paul. No, no one person can ever save you. Once you start thinking like that, you've already lost. Unless the one person you're thinking of is you, you've lost. (laughs) Hey, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Abolitionist Abstractions. As always, we're covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows for use by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. So I am back, and this week I am joined, I have a guest, my friend Jason Booth, who people may know, he's uh, one of the, actually the newest, I guess, the co-host of the Vanu podcast, which is uh, one of my favorite to listen to, to realize how far behind I am slacking behind some people who are trying to get their lives and, and headed towards more freedom. And I'm like, oh, I am way behind. Um, but I do, I do enjoy listening to it, even though it's torture for me on some level. But anyway, what's oh. up, man? How you doing? Uh, I'm doing good, man. I- I'm doing, I'm doing a lot better than I used to be. And, and I'm moving in a positive direction, like thanks to the Vanu podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and how far you are behind don't don't feel bad don't feel bad i'm i'm probably even a little bit further behind than you are but uh <laughs> the on the on the torture front man um two weeks ago or no about a, about a week ago shane and i got to interview this guy um carl ingram uh he runs a uh he's a van nomad in australia who chases the surf like uh-huh. that's his that's his thing. He he camps in the he camps in the woods, works like three half days a week, surfs every morning, and then writes like blog posts or, or whatever when the surf is down and then goes and surfs more. Or mountain bikes. That that's his other that's his other big thing. He surfs and he surfs and mountain bikes. Yeah. Man. And uh he he did it we, we, we recorded with him. He was 100%. He was he was in the middle of the woods. You could hear the birds chirping in the background. The laptop he was using was was charged via solar power. Oh nice. From his van and I'm just like the entire time he's talking and it just I'm so, I was so envious. <laughs> just, just it was, it was his, his van is just absolutely fantastic. His life is absolutely fantastic. He's very very free, works very very little. Is very very he just he enjoys his life at every level at this point, and it's uh it sounds pretty darn enjoyable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm pretty far behind too, and wow, I know what you mean. 
Yeah, well, it's 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 a lot easier when you don't have certain ties, you know. <laughs> if you're able to do that type of stuff, yeah. I, di- I didn't get to listen to that one. I think that was a Patreon episode you guys did, right? And unfortunately, my finances yeah. do not allow me to donate to anybody's Patreon currently. Uh, but I listen to all wow. the other shows, and I, I I've I've heard. I, I I'm actually there's a Telegram group that I'm in with the uh, with your other co-host Shane and uh, one of our other friends, uh, Aaron Thompson, who runs uh, Liberty Lampoon. And because the three of us work together on different projects and stuff. And uh, I hear some of the stuff from him in there. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that does sound great. And uh, ma- mainly uh, like uh, Shane, I know all of a sudden has like jumped up his plans and is like off and running with certain things. And I listen to him and I'm like, Oh, I so wish I could do that. But then I also have to remember that he's like, you know, 16 <laughs> years younger than me. <laughs> Has, yeah. Doesn't have kids. Hasn't had to, you know, yep. do, hasn't racked up all the debt and all the stupidity that I have in my life at this point. No. So, um, although as you were talking about that, I started to realize that I may actually almost inadvertently get to stumble into at least testing this out a little bit sometime in the near future because my <sighs> the sale of my house is hopefully coming up soon. I actually heard from my my real estate attorney today that or my agent today that uh, the contract should be in my hand to sign on Friday. So two days from now or less than oh, two days from now. now. Fantastic. Yeah. So hopefully that will actually be happening so- sooner rather than later. My court situation is still completely up on the air. That's something else. I something else I learned today. I don't, I don't want to go into this too much because actually the reason I have you here is you actually requested to be here tonight. You had something you had some stuff you wanted to talk about. And I, I thought it actually fit in nicely with the conversation I had with myself last week, <laughs> um, <laughs> which actually I, I was very pleased. I, I got a lot of positive feedback about that one. I was told that was actually one of my better episodes. And I was like, oh, good. A rant of mine was, was taken well. I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> um, <laughs> but just quickly, uh, yeah, I, I found out, I learned another new thing about government today. Uh, what I learned about government today <laughs> was that apparently, uh, because I, I finally got in contact with my lawyer today for my criminal case. And I've been trying to reach him for, for a few days now. And apparently, for some reason, he just hasn't got back to me. But finally talked to him today. And what I learned today is that even though during our last court appearance, where we once again had to ask for an adjournment because the other side waited till the last possible second to change things up and tell us that, you know, even though they told us they were going to come with another deal, they waited till the last minute to say, oh, no, nope, we're going to offer you the same crappy deal we've offered before. Uh, and so my lawyer was kind of forced to take it. It was either, oh, no, he wasn't forced to take it adjournment. He said, well, screw it. We're just going to, you know, we're going to go go to trial at this point because you guys keep dragging your feet. So even though it was scheduled in the court, like the, the judge writes it down on her calendar, you know, because she has to, not only does the, does my side have to submit a day and not only does the DA has to have to agree to the day, then the judge has to look at her calendar and go, yeah, okay, I can fit you in that day. Um, so even though all this occurred, and I was told that I had to show up again on the, on the next date, which is coming up so- shortly now on March 12th. Uh, for the pretrial hearings, I learned today that that doesn't actually mean I'm going to have pretrial hearings <laughs> on the 12th. <laughs> what can actually happen is even if the DA says that they're ready and my side is like, we're ready to go, the judge could all of a sudden not be ready and could say that there's no room in the court for it that day. But I may not know that until the day that I actually show up. So I have no way of knowing if I'm showing up for another in and out case or I'm going to be there for less than an hour or I'm going to have to spend the entire day. You know, this, of course, takes no, into, uh, no consideration if the, if the person who has to deal with this has a job that they may need to take off a couple of hours or an entire day for like none of this is taken into consideration. It's just like, nope, even though we said this and it's all set up through the court system. Now we can still change it at the last minute and don't have to really tell you until the, literally the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> so yeah, that's that. That's what I learned about All government the, today. Yeah, cats. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is that's terrible. It's it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, like I said, I, I don't want to get bogged down into too much, but it's it's just it's it's it's. I should have expected it, you know, with everything that's happened so far. I really should have, but you know, it's just <laughs> it's it's par par for, par for the course at this point. So yeah, it's it's just it's ridiculous. It's you know, like I said, should have expected it. It really it really is just par for the course, like you said, because it's just it's just been this insane the entire time. So why should I expect it to be any different? But because of that, like I said, I may actually get to test out the van nomad thing. Uh, not not really fully planned, so it may not go very well. But 
I actually am going to be like, I've already said that if the sale of my house gets completed and I have to still stick around for the court case, I'm not leaving because I'm not going to travel back and forth. I'm not going to pay for that cost. That's just insane. And I really don't want to rent another place even like month to month if I don't know how long I have to stay. And I definitely don't want to pay to stay in a hotel or a motel or something. So I think I, I think murder dog and I just may live out of our head of the car for a little while. Uh, because the girl, the girls and Jen have a place to stay still. She still has her apartment available, so they can all stay there. Um, but I, you know, I have my little Honda Element. I just may, you know, I'm probably gonna have to get a storage space anyway to store all my stuff until it's ready to move to Indiana. So I could just throw my my two rear car seats in there, and then Murder Dog and I'll have the whole back of the Element to live out of for a month or so. <laughs> <laughs> it's doable. It's easily doable. There's a, there's all sorts of nomads that live live in in basic little cars or or minivans things like that um i'll I'll get one one of the tips one of the things that they that they all say um is uh uh planet fitness you got i'm sure you guys have them out there yes um ten ten dollars right ten dollars and they got they got free showers ten dollars a month and you can go there and hang out and, and, and do a free shower and all that good stuff Oh, nice! Yeah, don't even oh. you know, don't even bother to stick to stick around and work out. Just hop in and out for a shower every day. Uh, yep. And actually, I mean, <laughs> I'm used to not showering every day anyway because we just got in the habit of that after the kids were born. Like you know, when when we had twins and we did you know neither of us were sleeping, <laughs> and uh, somebody and, and I was also still trying to work full time. You know, we just kind of got used to it. it. Was like, okay, whose day is it? It wasn't. It wasn't a matter of who's uh, like, yeah. can I shot? Can I shower right now? It's like, whose day is it? The shower. <laughs> like, we decided we uh, only we only had time to have. I mean, you you you, you did the twins thing at, when they were young. I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure you know about that. Yeah, it's like, okay, whose day is it? <laughs> is it your day to shower? Is it my day to shower? <laughs> I don't remember anymore. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have twins also, and it was one of those situations where it's like. God, you stink. Go take a shower. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, you know, you, you run out of hours in the day, man. You just fall over at a certain point. You know, you can't help it. So, so yeah, I don't, I don't even need it every day. But that's, yeah. still, that's still a good deal. Ten bucks for even every other day. It's still not a bad deal. Yeah. Sleeping sleeping takes precedence over shower when you have twins. Yes, exactly. So, <laughs> I mean, and, and even if you even if you do shower, you're most likely going to sp- smell like spit up and like other bodily fluids from them anyway. So, you know, it really doesn't matter. You know, and when you're somebody well, like me, we, when you're somebody like me, you add into all the dogs we had here in the mix too. It just, you know, who cares? <laughs> yeah, and we did the formula thing, and formula freaking stinks. Oh yeah, we we ended up oh. having to do that too. Unfortunately, we didn't want to, but <laughs> we didn't. Re- uh, really we didn't. We didn't want to either, but it was really yeah, good choice. Yeah, choice it was. Either. It was what you call it. Yeah, that stuff is not very pleasant. <laughs> oh no, it's terrible. It's, uh, so yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Still, toddlers are still less offensive than the government. This is true. This is very true. Yeah. So. But, so yeah. So so yeah. We were. Uh, we like I said. We we did have another point for you coming on and wanting to have a discussion with me. So I think it had something to do with guns and great men and stuff like that. So uh, the, why don't you lay it on me, man? The, the the great man theory. That's that's what I really wanted to bring up. Um. And it's 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 something that that I I had a, a cognitive dissonance about, and and I was, I fell into the trap of of the great man versus, the 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 boogeyman or or the evil person, um, when especially like like the last election, Trump Trump was the the supposed quote unquote great man, you know, because Hillary was going to do all these bad things, so they were all oh Trump, you know, Trump will stop Hillary, Trump, you know, Trump is is the great man that would stop the evil person, um. And and it, it's not just the it's not just the the, the state. It's the two party supporters that believe this. It's it's the libertarians and the anarchists also, you know, like like Kokesh and things like that. There, the, the great man, the great man theory needs to go away because nobody that is an actual threat to the global elitists will ever make it into a position of power in the system that is designed to keep the global the global elitist in power, right? So like Kokesh, Kokesh will never be president, period. End of discussion. It's not even, it's not even a pipe dream at this point. It is, it is a complete non-fact. It will never happen, but people still defend him and they defend Rand Paul and they, they defend like all these politicians based on their popularity and not based on 
the fact that they'll ever get anything done. The system isn't designed in a way that a person can rise through power and and dismantle. It's it's never gonna happen. Well and yeah. I, I I I get in arguments I get in arguments all the time with, with anarchists about this and about libertarians about this. And it's 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 a it's a ideology or, or it's an idea that, that needs to go away. Yeah. Well, I, I definitely agree with that. I mean, I, I've talked to, uh, well, I think the, the first person I really heard talk about it in such a net, like I never, like I knew him about the great man theory. And, and for those who don't know, I think it's, was it, uh, Carlisle? I think Thomas Carlisle was the one who I guess is credited with popularizing it. I don't Like if he, if he wasn't the one who actually coined the phrase, I guess back in the 1840s or something like that, uh, of the of the great man you know and it's you know that that this is what that this is how uh this is this is how you know society will be saved always essentially and, and was it hobbes too who took up the i can't remember i get my philosophy and stuff like that mixed up but yeah this whole idea but it was ben stone who originally uh brought the idea of the great man fallacy to me instead where that's really what it is like these people seeking this it's it's always this one per, it's this one person who can save us through you know from this system or that system or whatever it is they, they're the ones who can lead us uh through this and then only the only they and which only they can do it which is why people who allegedly are principled will just throw the those so-called principles to the side and go oh no but for this one particular case you know, and it definitely <laughs> happened with Trump. And, you know, yeah. for me, as, as I've mentioned before, and I think I brought this up in last week's episode, you know, I've likened Trump to Reagan for quite a while now. And the, say, the I mean, the great man, the great man fallacy with Reagan is insane to this day, even when there's like just so much information out there, like not even like. If you go look, because I actually have recently uh, searching for certain things about Reagan to kind of throw in some conservative faces to try to rile them up and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, if you search like terms like the Reagan myth, most of the stuff you come up with is articles from like hard left, you know, like salon, you know, like, you know, the, the dredges huh. of the Huffington post and like all this different stuff. So clearly I could see why people would just like, Oh, of course this is garbage. I'm not going to read any of this stuff. And then you'll see stuff also in there from right wing stuff going such and such debunked, but they're debunking the ones that are all like basically straw man garbage and aren't actually attacking the real things like say the myth of Reaganomics by Rothbard which is a really excellent essay <laughs> that I've been sharing a lot recently, which is not from any of these left-wing sites. It's from, you know, you could find it on the Mises Institute <laughs> website. <laughs> and, you know, it just <laughs> runs down exactly why Reaganomics was a failure. And it's not because of all the left-wing bullshit that's out there. It's the actual, like, you, you can look at the numbers, you know, like, who was the first, who was the first president to jack the, jack, jack the uh, debt to over a trillion? Reagan, who was the one who ran on the, who ran on dismantling the the Department of Energy and the Department of Education, and not only did he not abolish either one, he increased the budget of both. And in fact, in the case of the Department of Education, I believe it was he increased the budget two and a half times. So yeah, <laughs> you know, like, like that. government spending was out of control during Reagan. I mean, this is the man who wouldn't let go of his Star Wars fantasy. You know, that they kept <laughs> dumping money into and still kept dumping money into after he was gone, even though at the time, everybody who actually knew anything was like, this will never work. Like the, the whole the dumping any money into this program, this will never work. It can't work. This is this is not a movie, Mr. President, basically was like what you had no. to explain it like, you know, but it's like the, the, these facts are out there. And they're they're easily as are, like obtainable by just about anybody, but the myth still continues because that's how people have been conditioned, and it's oh you know to a certain extent. I, I mean, I've said it, and I, I catch you catch the you catch even worse flack from a lot of libertarians, especially if you mention Ron Paul in this category, because for as great as Ron Paul is, and for all the wonderful things he says. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, <laughs> hey, there's a reason we have a couple of Seas of Liberty episodes specifically dedicated to destroying the Paul legacy. <laughs> because, hey, I, well, you know, 
It was a great man thing. Oh, Ron Paul can save us. Ron Paul. No, no one person can ever save you. Once you start thinking like that, you've already <laughs> lost. Unless the Ron, one person Ron you're thinking Paul, of is yeah. you, you've lost. <laughs> yeah. Ron Paul, Ron Paul voted no on every single bill. Right, supposedly that that's his that's his big claim to fame. He voted no on all the bills because he read them. He didn't stop shit. He didn't stop a damn thing, right? The 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 NDAA, the Patriot Act, the the TSA, the the DHS, all that stuff. He didn't stop anything. He didn't stop any of the illegal wars. He didn't stop the government spying. He didn't stop the metadata. He didn't stop the the gate rape TSA pat downs. Ron Paul is my favorite status, but he didn't stop a damn thing. So it was pointless for him being there, right? There, there, it was. There was. There was no. He didn't change anything, so there was no point in him being there. And and as for Reagan, like my God, people read a fucking book. Reagan sucked, right? All this the 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 war on drug stuff and all that. On one hand, and he's importing cocaine from Panama with the other. Yeah, the gun control, the gun control in California. My God, he he passed gun control in California because the Black Panther Party was starting to arm and defend their own neighborhoods, in which the police were afraid to go. The police were afraid to go into these neighborhoods, so the Black Panther Party started policing and protecting their own neighborhoods. And he didn't like that, and the, the government didn't like that, the police didn't like that, so he passed gun control to get the guns out of the hands of the Black Panthers. He suppressed minorities through gun control. Yep. And then, 1994, during the assault, the federal assault weapons ban, Reagan wrote a letter to Congress urging them to pass the federal assault weapons ban. Oh, yeah, I, I forgot about that. <laughs> Yep, Reagan. I, I, Reagan sucked. I, I saw some people recently when the when the when the gun control thing came up, you know, right after the right after the school shooting, obviously when it became super hot news again. I saw a lot of people erroneously claiming that Reagan had passed legislation. I'm like, no, he didn't. Did he did he, did he pass stuff, or he just? I remember him having some involvement, but I thought that happened during Clinton. <laughs> Wasn't that the whole thing, or did Clinton let it go? Did Clinton let it sunset, or I thought it was Bush that let it sunset? I forget the order of that. But, yeah, Bush Bush let it sunset. Clinton signed it in ninety four. That's what it was. Yeah, Clinton it signed a, it, it, so, a, it. So it wasn't yeah, Reagan it who signed a, it into a law. No, Reagan didn't sign it into law, but the Senate, the Senate was almost fifty fifty on it, and Reagan wrote a letter to the Senate, um, uh, uh, basically basically advising them to pass it. Which is which is doubly insane, be, not not only because this man you know no lo he's no longer president he at that point he's been out of being president for over six years right because yeah <laughs> in ninety four something like that yeah and he and everybody who is still in government which there's plenty of people because again well documented people just like you know the presidents may change and certain senators and congress creators may change but the bureaucracy sticks around for a long time plenty of those people still there every one of them were quite aware of the information that has now not only become public knowledge because it always was but has now finally been admitted by reagan's children publicly that he was suffering through dementia through the second, almost the entire second term. So now you're talking six years after that, when everybody's fully aware that the guy had lost his fucking mind <laughs> before he even left the office. Six years after that, you're taking the word of this guy and going, oh, okay, well, this is going to sway us. <laughs> <laughs> Let's let's take the word of the professional actor. Yes, the professional Tell, actor yeah. who who was who was suffering. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not ridiculing the fact that he was suffering de from dementia, but I'm ridiculing the fact that these people were taking anything that like because again, this has been public knowledge for a long time, and plenty of people tried mm -hmm. to claim it was like you know some conspiracy theory bull bullshit. It, it's not actually true. It's like no, I recently saw. I think his. I think one of his sons most one his son's most recent book says it <laughs> talks about it. <laughs> You know, I was like, oh, yeah, this is, yeah, we tried to hide it. But no, yeah, he was definitely com almost completely losing it before he even left office. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> so, yeah, it, uh, but yeah, so the myth, the myth around him is insane. 
and uh, not not dementia. Um, uh, Alzheimer's. Ronald Reagan had Alzheimer's while president. His son says. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Alzheimer's. Sorry, not not, not dementia. I, I apologize. <laughs> wrong, wrong disease. <laughs> yeah. But he. But he. Uh, yeah. He was already. He was already losing it. And uh, yeah, a couple of years later, he's going to write an emotional play. But he's it's like I said, it's the the great the the, the myth around him is insane because all this information can be found out like what you know, like, you know, like you're saying the drug war thing isn't the drug war thing is horrible. I mean, him and his horrible little wife, Nancy, would just say no to drugs. I mean, come on, that 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 woman did more to cause harm to people <laughs> than some third world dictators. <laughs> All right. How many people have? How many people have been in? Like, I've actually used the 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 word "cunt" to describe her in the past, and some people think I'm being really nasty. But I'm like, you know what? Seriously, like, how many people have been incarcerated and had their had their their time, their money taken from them, and you know, oftentimes been roughed up by the police in the process because what because the campaign this woman went on while she was first while she was first lady. <laughs> To, ra- to really ramp up the drug war. I mean, Nixon tried to ramp it up, but oh man, he looked he he looked like a he looked like a toddler next to what what, Ray, what Nancy Reagan was able to pull off. <laughs> yeah, and all and this this is this is this is happening while Ronald Reagan's CIA is importing cocaine from Panama by the buttload, literally literally by the metric ton they're importing cocaine on the cia dime from from panama because the general um uh, uh pablo escobar was spying on colombia for them <laughs> all right uh, go gary webb gary webb don't or D- gary webb's a uh, uh kill the messenger go read that book if you have it or go watch the movie uh um uh, uh, Renner, Renner does a fantastic job as Gary Webb. That is, that'll, that'll tell you everything. That'll tell you everything. Yeah. Jeremy Renner does a, a, a oh, really I'm good a job as Gary Webb. <laughs> Gary Webb, who committed suicide by shooting himself in the back of the head twice. <coughs> hey man, it can yeah. happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And of course, oh well, yeah. And I mean, it's, uh, I, I don't mean, again, I'm not making light of, of, poor, of what happened to poor Gary Webb, but despite all that, despite everything you just described, I think that I, I think I, I can only recall one name of one person who actually went to jail for any of that. And that's freeway freeway, Ricky Ross, right? I think he's the only yes. one who ended up going to jail for all of that mess. <laughs> Yeah, he was <laughs> direct, well directly at least. Pl- like I said, plenty directly, of other yeah. people ended up in jail thanks to it, thanks to the the, the yeah, insanity j- of jail or jailer in the grave. Well, yeah, the one you know, like Reagan, yep. Ra- Reagan, Reagan, and his CIA literally started the crack ec- 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 epidemic. Uh huh. <laughs> like again, it was again them. in again in the in the black neighborhoods of Southern California, where the Black Panthers were protecting their own neighborhoods. That's where this all began. <laughs> yes, Reagan. Reagan was a Reagan was the the supposed quote unquote great man. That he was not great at all. Number one, and uh, he didn't he didn't change anything for the good. He didn't stamp out any evil. Yeah. Iran Con- Iran Contra. He was running guns and drugs and running up the debt. And his economics sucked. <laughs> and, and that whole thing, he was like, he was actually doing that against a Congress that was actually trying to stop him from doing that. <laughs> like, whatever, you know, say whatever you will about, you know, the, the, the politicians in Congress in general. But at that point in time, almost the entire Congress was actually literally trying to stop him because they knew he was trying to do it. They actually had to go through, like, if you follow the story on that, they actually had to go through the black budget stuff in order to make that work uh-huh. because Congress was like, no, we are not giving you, like, they actually had resolutions passed that we're not funding the Sandinista, like, we're not getting involved with the Sandinista conflict. We're not. It's not happening. There's no money yep. being put towards that. And then Reagan was Reagan and his crew was just like, nope, we're going to find another way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the the hypocrisy was on full, like you know. But again, that's one of those things. People just they, they it's it's that goldfish mentality, man, where everybody just forgets. 
mm-hmm. and they, they're just they're blinded by what they're told to remember. Because, you know, what are, what are you taught in school? I mean, I was still in school during Reagan's presidency. You know, I was in elementary school. Oh, I, re- I, I was in elementary I school. I the D.A.R.E. program. I was in elementary school then, you know. Man, I started school in, what, 82? So I was in school through through most of Reagan's presidency. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I, I remember all this stuff. And I, I, you know, I remember what we were taught about him and he was like, we weren't taught about any of the other stuff. And when we were, when, when we finally came, like, you remember, I was reminded of this watching that, uh, whatchamacallit, that, that series, that Oliver Stone, Stone series, uh, the untold ser- uh, story or the untold history of America that came out like six years ago, which I think I, I can't remember if I mentioned that last week or not, but I mentioned it recently on one show, which I know is a couple of years old and you have to get past his hard left bent on some things and his horrible interpretation of capitalism, which he blames for everything. Um, and the fact that he tries to blame George Bush for everything. And while I'm all about ger- blaming George W. Bush for a lot of things, he takes it a little too far. <laughs> uh, but if you can get past that, the history he points out is all accurate as far as I know is everything else I've come across over the years. It all lines up. So um, I was reminded like when, when, you know, I remember seeing this when it happened, when Reagan was on, when Reagan, Reagan finally went on national television to admit that it had happened. The whole Iran Contra thing after denying, denying, denying that he knew anything about it and everybody trying to cover up for him <laughs> when he finally got out there instead of cries for impeachment, like what happened with would would happen with any president now? They just left him alone. Congress is like, ah, we're gonna let him finish it out, and nobody bothered. <laughs> and uh, he was allowed to just go out gracefully and remembered as to this day by Republicans and Democrats alike, one of the greatest presidents ever. And it's like, really, <laughs> really, like we're not talking about like Washington or even Lincoln, like where the where the accounts are kind of sketchy, <laughs> like because nobody, none of us were there to see it. We're talking about like not only like like the old old timers remember it because it was back in their day, but like no, like like I said, I'm 41 years old. I remember this vividly because I lived through it. Like people my age and younger who were actually a, a little younger that were actually there, still like, oh no, no, Reagan was the greatest. He didn't do it, you know. He he could do no wrong. Oh, I ran Contra. Oh, that was Ali North. That was all him, man. <laughs> See, and and that's that's the thing. Like Reagan did all this, uh, all this absolutely terrible stuff, right? But then again, so did Bush, so did so did Bush Senior, so did Clinton, so did George W, so did Obama, so is Donald Trump, and they're all doing the same sort of thing. There, there's there's not realistically, in in, in the big spectrum of things, there's not a lot of difference between any of them. Right, I mean, they're they're all running guns. They're all running drugs. They're all oppressing. They're all all usurping our freedoms through through laws. And but people keep supporting them because they're 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 the quote they're they're the great man that's going to defend us from this other evil person. Right, you know, Obama, Romney, Obama, McCain. Right, Obama was the great man. He's got to stop these war hawks, Trump and Hillary. Trump has to stop Hillary because we know Hillary's going to do this and this and this and that and that and this. Trump has done every almost everything that he said he was going to stop Hillary from doing. Yep, but people including, still including, defend him. Including, well, the the, the only thing he, and you know one thing he hasn't done that he said he was going to do is put her in jail. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and wasn't that one of the very first things he said? Like within like days of the election, like walk that back yeah. immediate, almost immediately. You know, that was one of the yeah. first and, you know, yeah, we're, we're going to, we're going to defeat ISIS in the first hundred days of office. It's 14 months later, homie. We're well, I, uh, yeah, well, you ISIS, guys, you guys ISIS, just, ISIS, you guys, you guys, ISIS keeps getting taken out, but it's not by the U S I, I heard this. I had the, I heard the Syrians and the Kurds have done a wonderful job at knocking a lot of ISIS out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know too much about the U S you know, they're, they're still managing to arm them in different ways. But uh, yeah, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, that, that, it's well, I was just gonna say you're right because it, it is. It's like you know, you know, going back to what you said originally about the fact that it's not just the garden variety status that has these opinions. It's people that claim to be anarchists and libertarians who went all in for Trump because they bought they fell right back into the you know the lesser of two evils mentality and oh she's <laughs> she's so evil she has to be stopped. It doesn't matter. Principles yep. be damned. And when you, when people like, you know, 
I tried to point this out then because I, I mean, admittedly, I have, and I, I have admitted this. Admittedly, I was not convinced that Trump had a legitimate shot of winning until right before it happened. I was in the camp that I really thought Hillary had it sewn up just because of history and just because of everything else. I'm like, oh, they're, they're, they're so going to give it to her. But, you know, once I once I recognized that he was a legitimate threat, like, you know, a month before the election, I was like, oh, this isn't going to be good because like it, everybody's going to go, yay, we stopped Hillary. But like I, the only reason I thought it might, might be good is because like, like, OK, people will finally see that it really doesn't matter. But now, like you said, 14 months in and people are still defending a lot of these actions. I mean, now he's like playing 73rd dimensional chess, I think. Um, I, yeah. I, I think that's the justifications that are up to at this point with all the things. I mean, I've, I've actually seen people defend every statement he's made recently, even though plenty of people who have supported him through this point were like, whoa, 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 whoa. At least like some of the bigger names I've seen were actually like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did he really just say this? Like, wait, no, no, no. Like, this is a line that even I can't accept being crossed. But uh, plenty of other people are still defending this, going, no, no, no. He's just saying this to convince them, to to make the liberals call themselves out. And I'm just like, nah, man. Like, you don't just, like, I, I said this, you know, this was part of my rant again about it last week. He, When it comes to Trump, he just says what's on his mind at that moment. He's not thinking about it that, yeah, he may be a good troll in some respects, but a lot of stuff he's proven time and time again. And again, if you're old enough and have actually paid attention enough and are not just going back on what you can find by looking up different clips and stuff, you know, if you can actually remember it happening, like this has been Trump his entire life, at least since I've been aware of him and since the mid eighties, you know, just this bombastic yeah. guy. He, oh, he never thinks a lot of things through. He's got that New York bravado that just comes out. He has to say this stuff. He can't. Can, he yeah, really. Not, not he not he that, literally but, has no filter. Yeah, not not only that, but but Donald Trump, like Donald J. Trump Jr., that the person that you know in, in the in the Oval Office, he is a character, right? He 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 is a manufactured character. This is not a person. This is this is a. This is this is uh, um, an act, right? He, he's he's an actor. He he maybe he, like he was in Home Alone one time, I think. But beyond that, he has been acting in the public for a long, long, long time. This this persona, it is a total facade. This is a character that he is playing, and I I can't prove that. I can't prove that. But that that is something that I I hardline believe that he is. See, I, yeah, I don't know about. That. I mean, I, 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 I well, could understand that being. The, I could understand him doing that originally, but I, I don't know. I like I said, I, I don't have any proof either. But I, <laughs> but, well, yeah. but I, I think that if anything, much like I've described, you know, certain other liber, well, so-called libertarians who have shown their stripes over the years, there's certain thing, you know, a certain point when you, whatchamacallit, when you play a part for so long, you know, the Heath Ledger, uh -huh. the Heath Ledger syndrome, you know, where you be, where you get immersed in that character for so long that you no longer and, and know you, how you to be, disassociate. You become, the, you become the character. Yeah. Yeah. That's you what, don't, that's what I'm you saying. can't. And I think I, that, that I would buy, I would buy that he yeah. was always that bombastic to, to start with. Cause he, you know, he was, he was trying to make himself known and he liked he liked the attentions and this is the way he got it so he could do that but you know this point 30 something years later i'm thinking he really believes a lot of his own bullshit <laughs> yeah I, I i agree with that he he definitely has to believe it um but i i think i think people give him too much credit is is well, what yeah, it really is definitely. my my issues is people give him too much credit for for what he's doing for his intelligence and and too much credit for his position as president right i mean if they especially as an anarchist an anarchist should have known and even a libertarian should have known that nobody that is a legitimate threat to to the system to the global elitist is ever going to rise to a position of any serious power in a system that is designed to protect both the system and the global elitist Right, he, <laughs> Donald Trump rising to president wasn't gonna do jack shit for freedom. Okay, okay, like, sure, he lowered, he helped lower the taxes, right? But that had to go through the House and the Senate, the tax cuts and all that good stuff. And then on the flip side, he talks about raising online sales tax and and raising 
you know, in, infrastructure, gas taxes, and, and raising this tax rate, that tax. He gave with one hand and then took away with another. And then the, 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 the tariffs, the, the tariffs. That yeah, came and, too. And, and, and the tariffs. Yeah, let's not even go on the tariffs and, and the, the trade war that that's going to create. There's already backlash coming out of Europe about that one. And Canada, I saw it too. <laughs> Canada, Canada too. Yeah, Canada's still pissed about the the lumber import tax, the lumber tariff. Um, but like like Trump, he's he's not going to do anything big. He's not going to do anything to like revolutionize America. He's not gonna he's not gonna give people any freedom. He's not gonna shrink the government in any way. <laughs> he's just, yeah. he's just a puppet he's just a puppet and anarchists and libertarians especially should have known that but they but again that they fell into the great man theory because he was he was the anti-hillary he's he said things that were that no other person was saying and and he's very he is very charismatic but so was obama obama was a very charismatic person he was a very very good public speaker and he did say some things that no other president had said before, no other politician had really said before. But again, that doesn't make him a good person. It doesn't make him a good politician or a good president. And and the next the next president will be will do the exact same freaking thing. And during that election, they'll tell us again that is the most important election of our lifetime, and we have to stop X. So a vote for, if you don't vote for Y, it's a vote for X, and X is going to do this, and you have to vote for Y to protect you from X, or or you have to vote for X to protect you from Y. <sighs> yeah, anarchist. Yeah, I just I hate the great man theory. It needs to it needs to disappear, and people need to exercise the collective spooks out of their own minds. And and realize what they're doing with these these great man theories, and realize that they that they are their own worst enemy. Yeah, they really are. And you know, again, all all you have to do is actually look through history, <laughs> like actually pay attention, and it, it 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 always it just always ends badly, you know. And if you if you but if you don't pay attention, you, it's easily pushed under the rug, and most people just go, oh yeah, I I, I remember it like. Oh, that's what they said. That was like you know they show they make movies or people write books and these glowing things and oh yeah, it's great the great time and they point to you know they ch they cherry cherry pick results to make it look like uh, that was the only thing and you know the, the only way I look at I I've, I've always said it's it's like the white you know it's the whitewashing of history that's really what it is it's just it be to me it just becomes less and less acceptable when it's happening in this this close of the recent past you know <laughs> it's like you don't you know you forget going back all the way to look at the, all the times it's happened like you know a century or two ago but like even like recently right here it keeps happening and people just i, I get it's it has to be out of desperation i think but uh, you know how many how many times does it have to fail you know, like, and even still, like, even in this, even we're dealing with the here and now with the, with the people that are still defending Trump or some, or his actions, especially people who are, you know, supposedly libertarians or anarchists. It's like, how, like, how much more do you, does he have to do for you, for, for it, for it to finally sink in that either A, he was completely full of shit and he just told you what you wanted to hear. And now that he's there, he's just doing, you know, he's just playing ball and just doing whatever he has to do to keep to keep himself in office and keep the keep the spotlight on him. Or B, he may have had some of those intentions and quickly realized that once he got in, he had no option to, but to either play ball or something bad was going to end up happening to him. And he and and now everything's going the way he's supposed to be going. Like those are the two most likely scenarios. And either one of them, to me, doesn't matter. It's like it just proves that the system, like this is this is the system. So all the people who got who kept saying that you know Trump or even some of the crazier ones who thought Bernie was anti-establishment, you know, it's like all these people who think, oh, these are the ones that they're really they're 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 they're, they're really against all this stuff, and they're they're the only ones who could stop this. No, because like no. The, it's been proven time and time again that anybody. Who's, who goes severely against the against the grain 
of, you know, whatever you want to call it, the deep state, the, you know, what, whatever, like the, the, the shadow government, whatever term you want to use. Like, again, this is other stuff that's been conspiracy theory for years, but is really easily proven that it exists. You know, <laughs> like all you have to do is look at all these agencies that have been put in p place over the years and have their own powers because they're allowed to create their own regulations and have all these bureaucrats and all these positions that outlast every president, most politicians in general. They're just there making the rules and making sure things go a certain way for a long, long time. <laughs> Like this has been going on forever. So nothing is, nothing can ever really change. You know, that's why I, I, I honestly don't believe that even if Ron Paul, even if there had been like that groundswell of support that Trump was given that allowed, you know, that still like even the people like myself who really still thought that Hillary was just going to win that, you know, it, it was quote unquote was allowed to happen. That's the way some people look at it. It's like, Oh, they allowed it. Yeah. They, they, of course they did because they know they can still control things. <laughs> like if you want to, if, if you want, no matter how you want to look at it, it, it just, co it comes out that government fails over and over and over again and continuing to hope against hope that one person can change all that. It's, it's just, it's been proven way too many times that it cannot be done. Like I, I say all the time that I really try to stay away from absolutes these days, but I'm having a hard time finding and finding a, an issue, like finding a hole in this one. <laughs> like, when has it worked out well? You know, it's either it's either a politician that leads you to more of the same, which is usually death, destruction, and more of your more of your wealth being taken and your and your liberty taken from you, or it's a cult leader and lots of people end up dead. Like, you know, the, the great men, these things never end up well. Or it's some celebrity who you, fi you find out years later was actually just like this horrible individual who's doing all these things behind the scenes, which, again, doesn't even happen that much these days because all this information gets put out there right away. Um, so if, but if it happens to a celebrity, they could be, t you know, it'll, it'll destroy their lives. Although some of them still manage to make it back, um, you know, which is funny. I, I don't pay attention to a lot of that stuff, but I did, I did catch a lot of the people who were, who were given the Oscars flat for giving Kobe Bryant an Oscar during the height of the Me Too hysteria when <laughs> when when Bryant has all that rape stuff, you know, in his past. Yeah, um, yeah kind of why a lot of people can't take you seriously, I guess, is the you know, first thought that comes to mind. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't you you can't take any of this seriously. It's it's <sighs> But yeah, and, and and the political it's it's smoke and mirrors. It uh, the pol politicians, pol most politicians are puppets. I, I won't say all the politicians because I know that there are people that are that are truly trying to do good and and you know like as much as as much as I I dislike politicians and dislike politics, I will say that I admire Justin Amish. I, he he is he is a he is a decent person, uh, and I know he's trying to do good, but he's not going to change anything. He's one member of a house of, of the House of Representatives. He it's it's the Ron Paul syndrome. He's he's not gonna that should be a thing, the Ron Paul syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> right? You're political, you're you're in office, but you're not gonna change anything because one no vote against four hundred, it's not gonna change anything. Um but yeah, well, with, he, has, with he does have some friends. They have their little, they have their little caucus, their little party. I mean, there's like a, oh, the, I, yeah. I, the only other one I can remember offhand now is Thomas Massey. I know he's involved. In that Thomas too. Massey. Yeah. That's, but yeah, that's and, the one that came to mind. But in general, you're right. They don't, you know, I mean, they, they have been able to shift, I guess, the overall um, voting pattern on certain things. Um, but yeah, on the whole, it, it, it just keeps getting proven time and time again that it doesn't matter because yeah, they were, you know, they, they're credited. That group is actually credited with getting, you know, the, uh, the Patriot was it the Patriot Act. That stupid thing. Part of that sunset it, I guess. But what did they do right after that? They implemented the freedom, it, Act. They implemented the freedom Act the next day. <laughs> <laughs> that basically yeah. put back everything that like all the important stuff that had been taken out. They found another way back in and that's all that ever happens because uh, you know, as I've said before, when it, especially when it comes to the American political system, I really think that they've mastered this better than any other, better than any other government in history 
because they've, you know, they've had a couple hundred years to work at it. And they've also had the luxury of being able to watch a whole bunch of other governments across the world, att- like, you know, with dictators and stuff like that, attempt to do, attempt to do things too quickly and fail repeatedly. So, you know, I, I think the uh, good old USSA government more than anything has uh, almost perfected the, the frog in the boiling pot scenario where they've got the temperature tuned just right, you know, where I've, I, again, I, I mentioned this recently, I don't remember where, but the, you know, the, the whole idea of the milker bills that exist that, you know, this isn't even just terminology that people, that the laymen use for it. Like this is actually terms that congressmen use for it. Like they have these things where they create bills just to rile people up just, yep, and just to absolutely. gauge their reaction with no intention of passing <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> this is the tactics and it's been going on for generations. So, you know, when, when, when it comes to election time and people like me say, it's not going to matter. There's no real difference. And, and certain people, and again, this happened this time around with, uh, you know, certain anarchists and stuff. Oh, you're being so naive. That's not, you know, you're making the sweeping generalization. There are actually differences because the Republicans, but I'm like, yeah, look at the voting history. Look what actually <laughs> happens. You're like, even people like that who are supposed to be so logical and so, and so like, so in tune with things that they actually think things through before they're not reactionaries. You know, they actually go, oh, they take the information and they look it over and then they decide whether it's good or bad they don't just reject it and go oh no you're you're just, you're being naive no just look what look what's actually transpired and look at the direction the cu- country as a whole has continued to take no matter who is in power you're focused on the rhetoric that's what people still keep getting hung up and you listen to the rhetoric and you go oh this one's going to be different no first of all you have to wait for it to actually be proven out and again 14 months in it's not looking too good you know, Reagan had the same thing. Reagan was, you know, going back to what we were talking about earlier with him. Reagan had the thing with the lower taxes. Yeah, he lowered the corporate taxes, but then he jacked everything else up a different place. <laughs> and, you know, the the one thing he's praised with the most, like some people think is like you can't you can't attack him at all. It's like, oh, he's still a great man because, you know, you know, the Mr. Gorbachev bring down this wall. Okay, again, something I was reminded of by watching that Oliver Stone series. If you actually pay attention to what really happened, if any one person involved in that whole thing, because because uh, it was, you know, to the public, it was Reagan and Margaret Thatcher and uh, and Gorbachev and the freaking Pope all having talks about this regularly about trying to de-escalate the call, you know, finally end the cold war. And, you know, and then Reagan gave that great speech, you know, that big speech and the Gorbachev tear down this wall and everybody goes, Oh, Reagan stopped the cold war. No, if any one of those is actually going to be given sole credit for this, or at least the, the lion's share of the credit. Um, if you actually follow what really happened, it's Gorbachev. <laughs> <laughs> he was the one who put more effort into trying this. And Reagan basically told him to F off multiple times while while Gorbachev was trying to make concession after concession to try to end this whole thing. <laughs> and then Reagan takes all the credit for it. And that's what he's remembered for. <sighs> yeah, weren't, was it, wasn't Russia like... <sighs> Didn't they? Didn't they? A, a couple of years after the wall came down, didn't ru- didn't the USSR go into like an economic collapse and totally break up? Yeah, within like less than right. two years, I think of the wall actually cut because what eighty nine was when it started. It officially came down in ninety one. I think by ninety two or ninety three that it disp- the Soviet Union disbanded. I can't remember somewhere in that timeline. Um, um let's see. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty. I thought um, it was it started in eighty nine. Ni- Nine ninety one, the the official dissolution, December twenty six ninety one. Oh, of the Soviet Union. Okay, so yeah, but I think the, the wall. <laughs> yeah. I think, like I said, I think the wall started to come down. Was it eighty nine or was it eighty seven? Whatever it was, I'm pretty. It took almost two years for the wall to finally come, 80, to come down. Eighty nine, the uh, November nine, nineteen eighty nine. So okay, think about it. The Berlin Wall came down less than two years later. The USSR had an economic collapse and and completely broke up. What if the wall came down? To ease the 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 tensions uh, uh, and the trade agreements, what if that was the reason it came down and not because Reagan was pushing it? Just uh, a thought. Just a thought. Yeah, I could. You know, there was definitely <laughs> there was there was definitely stuff like that going on too. But you know, again, yeah. because so, of the great man theory, 
This one, this yeah. one individual is, is given credit. It was, yeah. And you can't, you know, you can't, you can't, he can't be assailed. He's no, he's, he's the hero. And it, it's like I said, so many people just, I, I think so many people are just so desperate that they, they just, they needed Trump to be. And it's like, you know, how much more do you have to see? You know, how, how many levels of, how many dimensions do you, of chess do you think there are that you can keep ratcheting it up and going, oh no, he's just up to this level now and he's totally faking everybody out. <laughs> it's like, no, he's going with what's politically expedient. And, you know, just like ple people like me were trying to say before the election, you're going to find out there really is no difference other than the rhetoric. Because once it comes time for action to be put, you know, with things to be put in action, there's generally one direction that the power structure and the establishment on both sides of the, of, of the you know, the RNC, DNC want to go. Yes, there are differences of what they want certain you know what, what they want money to be set, spent on in certain directions. But there is one overall direction that they both want and that's more control. So oh, ab absolutely. It will that, always head in that control. direction and that's just that's just again that you know you talk about facts of life and stuff like that. That that's just, that is, you know, look at the history of just any government. They never shrink they always expand because that's just what it's about. Like that's the only, like that's, that's how governments feed. They have to keep growing. They, if they, if they maintain at the same level for too long, the natives quickly realize that it's not really as necessary as they think it is. Cause it's like, wait a minute, we haven't had to do anything and this, and things are running along smoothly. They're not helping us in this area and we're, we're doing fine. Like, and the more people realize that the more people in power go, Oh crap. We're not going to be in power very long. <laughs> so that's, you know, why, and, and that's that, why you don't see government yeah. shrinking. No, no, and and that that exact that that you just said about you know the government has to grow. I think that's one of the reasons that Trump is in office. If if Hillary would have gotten into office, everybody knows what Hillary would have. What uh, every everybody everybody knows what to expect with, with a Hillary Clinton as president, right? You know that the, she's going to go after guns and she's going to. You know, and increase Planned Parenthood and and education and all that. She that's what she's going to go after because that's what she has been going after for a long time. But you bring Trump into office, who is a political nobody, who nobody really knows what he's going to do. So he says all these wonderful things, and people are like, "Yeah, go Trump!" Right? And now Trump is in office, and they're stuck. Right? Well, he's better than Hillary. Right? Instead of saying, you know, make America great again, it's it's now he's he's still better than Hillary. No matter what Trump does, he's still better than Hillary in their eyes. So it allows the powers that be to expand the government, to expand government power without people getting too pissed off because it's their guy doing it. Right? It's 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 it, we don't care what the government does as long as our party is in charge mentality. So that's that's why I think Trump is in office. Honestly, that is, that is my one hundred percent opinion. That is why Trump is in office, so that he could ex so that they can expand the government and expand the the power uh, and the spine and the wars, especially ex ex expand the foreign wars without too many people being pissed off that it's happening. Well, yeah, I mean, heck, that's how that's how you got the left to accept them. Put Obama in there. Uh -huh. <laughs> And uh, it's okay if we, you know, we said we're going to end this stuff, but now, and now, you know, people, enough people on the right started to get agitated about these things because now, now Obama was in charge of it. So no, no now we're against it. But yeah, put Trump yep. in charge. Oh, it's okay. We'll, we'll just keep, you know, we'll bomb this one. We'll bomb that. We'll still bomb over here. And uh, oh, he's right. He's he he's ratcheting up the threat of nuclear war with somebody like with 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 a place like North Korea, which these these same people are always claiming is like you know an existential threat to our entire existence. It's uh, uh, somehow some way, <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> like it's like, but but that's okay. Like you you don't think you should reel that in either. Like none of this stuff. Like no, it's it's all okay because he he he's our savior, and you know. I mean, is it about He's, saving face? Like they they don't they don't they don't they're trying to like you know they're refusing. Is it a pride thing that they're not willing to let it go, or do they they honestly believe? Like do they also now believe their own bullshit that they've been steeped in it so long? I don't know. 
You know, like I said, I have seen some people. I, I have seen some people who have who have actually honestly come out and said, you know, I actually did. I saw a couple of them today. In fact, I honestly did support Trump, but up until this point, but now, like, I can't. Like, you know, I'm done. But other people yeah. still like, oh no, it's this, it's that. You know, whatever the excuse is, it's you know. Do you, do you really do? You, I mean, obviously, they they fear the alternative that much more. <laughs> But like, are you are you really un, that unwilling to admit that you were wrong? So that just so when the next time comes around, you were just going to make the same exact stupid mistake, and, and still cling to the next great man, as has been proven, keeps happening, you know? Because also plenty yeah, of it, plenty of people, especially in like the younger generations, have flip flop between you know parties over the past couple of elections because they were so disenfranchised with what happened the last time. <laughs> You know, and that's going to keep <laughs> happening too. Like, how many times are you going to keep falling for it? Well, they have to be better than the the other side, and then switch. It's like, do, do you not remember why you switched here in the first place? Like, <laughs> no. Again, they they have they have the goldfish mindset. It's it's what have you done for me lately? You know, they get they get very they get very anti X, and the opposite of X is Y. So suddenly they they go to support Y, and then they get tired of why or why does something wrong and then they get anti why oh look x is over here saying something that i agree with let's go back to supporting x and, and again that's that's just it's it's another version of the great man theory that's that's what it is they see the great man over here doing the good things saying the things that they agree with and and he he has to be better than why because why is why is evil why wants to do this that i don't agree with and again, that's that's something that 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 people really, really need to get over. And and I wish I could, I wish I could talk to every single person one on one and explain this to them. Um, and and I believe that most of them would understand it if they truly sat down and had a conversation or or were forced to actually think about this. But we don't because we're fucking drowning in boiling water. <laughs> Yeah, but it's the you know, it feels fine to all of them. They've been uh, they they've been boiled at just the just the right temperature to to, to keep <laughs> buying it. You know, no, not only not only do they like the temperature, but they're dragging us that are trying to hop out of the pot. They're dragging us back in. Yeah, they're well, holding our heads underwater. Yeah, well, that's the that's the crabs in the bucket, man. They just you can't get to freedom. No, no, no. Get back down here with us. <sighs> Stay stuck down here at the bottom. You know. Uh, but yeah, yes the more the more i discuss politics the more i like vanu the more i want a van the more i want to go live down down in my van by the river <laughs> hey man <laughs> you know i've i've said plenty of times if, if you know if i, if I didn't have if i wasn't if i didn't have a family already i i probably would have been there already but um at some point uh, I I may try to get back to that because I, I know Jen's actually expressed interest in living in an RV. Uh, I I don't think our kids would be too thrilled with it. Although I actually have recently started contemplating doing the whole uh, you know converted school bus thing that I know a couple that I know a bunch of people are also doing, which is kind of a groovy way to live. I think. <laughs> uh, I I love I love the converted school bus idea. I have seen some absolutely fantastic ones. One of the little little wood stove in it and just yeah that would suit me just fine yeah i mean my my my, my goal is obviously still to get the heck out of here and go start a farm but you know that 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 does sound kind of alluring and you know as, as i said at the beginning the more the more i listen to the Vanu podcast the more i'm like hmm maybe maybe <laughs> maybe i could do this stuff instead and you know convince 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 jen and the kids to get on board we'll see you know i don't know but uh, I would definitely like to live closer to that than having to deal with all the other BS because, you know, like I was also saying earlier, <laughs> they, I, I keep finding ways, you know, gov government government tells me how, they, how they're going to screw me on a regular basis. And, uh, you know, they, at least they tell me eventually, you, you know, usually at the last minute. But just because those things keep happening, it's like, yeah, I would just much rather find ways to not have to deal with them at all. So, yeah, definitely uh, lean more towards the Vanu side. <laughs> Then yeah, deal, if I could dealing with this dealing with this stuff in, inside the system. Yeah, the the system sucks, and you're never going to change it from the inside. And the system is set up so you can't change it from the outside. Um, 
you know, to 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 go back to to Ben Stone as we mentioned earlier, the market the market demand for the state, the market demand for government right now is very very high because it's it's the only product that people know. So as innovation, as technology advances, as the 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 black market and and the the, the second realm as as those start to grow and as people start to learn about the alternatives to government then the market demand for the state will will wean and when the market demand for the for freedom exceeds the market demand for the state then we'll start seeing real changes yeah exactly and that's uh you know i wish that that's a message i, w- I wish we get through to a lot more people too because there, there's a lot of people who think well people like me and i'm sure people like you too uh but the, they have this erroneous belief that that we believe that uh, the state will just you know magically go away if we ignore it. And it's like no, no. Um, <laughs> it's a lot more nuanced than that. And the way you the way that the way that you just put it is you know perfect because it is. It's this, you know Ben laid that out. I remember when I listened to him talk about that too. It's yeah, it, it is. There is a market demand, and you know people don't un- unfortunately. You know the people that the 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 people in this particular market currently outnumber us by a whole hell of a lot. So if they're creating that demand, it's kind of hard to you know dis disincent you know change their mind about that. Mm-hmm. Especially yeah. and, when they're uh, constantly pumped full of fear porn, and also whether through design or happenstance are constantly flooded with information that keeps them at somebody else's throat versus paying attention to what the government's actually doing as a whole they just they always have another enemy not just the one that not just the big boogeyman that the government always has to have you know whether it be north korea or iran or syria or russia or whoever it happens to be at whatever time or you know uh besides that one the boogeymen that are created domestically so that the people you know the cloward and piven stuff you know divide and conquer keeping people at each other's throats Oh yeah, absolutely. There's there's a there's a whole lot of boogeymen right now, you know, with with Antifa and and Black Lives Matter and the NRA and and the SPLC and just the 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 white nationalists, the alt right, whatever you want to whatever they call themselves this week. (laughs) They're they're all boogeymen and and people are all people are generally looking for a great man that's going to defend them against these these quote unquote boogeymen. And it's it's vice versa. It's it's the these these other parties that I just mentioned as boogeyman, they all have their own versions of the great man and they all have their own versions of boogeyman. And it's, it's a very, very dis- divisive mentality to have. And they're, they're, you're not going to change anything when you're constantly fighting with each other out of fear as, as, as when you're fearful and angry, you have a closed mind, and it, and a closed mind is never going to learn anything. Uh, it's 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 never gonna it's never gonna listen to any other ideas because, you know, fear fear and fear and anger are great motivators. Oh, absolutely. Oh. Uh, yeah, very easy to tap into that, and that's that's why it keeps happening, and that's why you know when I when I try to point out to people that it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, it's not me being naive. It's not me oversimplifying things. It's no, it's, it's, it's breaking it down to its simplest terms to show you that, you know, you just got to look and, you know, you, you, it's not going to change it. And, you know, I, I, again, I understand the desperation to some extent, but all you have to do is look at the repeated failures to realize, well, there's got to be a different way. And yeah, the, the best thing you can really do. Uh, is 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 try to show people a better way not just not just sit around and theorize about it not just you know talk about how these things but actively get out there and put these things into practice so that people can see because you know like like we said the gov- government's not going to change you're not going to be there there isn't a way to change it from the inside or outside but you know you do have to give people you do have to give people uh, options because people are not going to change what they have embedded in their mind as this necessary thing that has been around for basically ever as far as they're concerned which is not even in question it's not not even you know the, the, each individual may want to tweak certain things but overall you know this is just it's not it's not even a question in their mind the government has to happen 
So in order to in order to get over that, you can't just say, "Well, here, here's these great ideas, and how this is this is how I envision it." And if we all just do this, when they label you a utopian, well, in some in some respects, they're not exactly wrong because you're not giving no. them anything, you know, tangible to see uh, to, to to actually like grab a hold, like you know, well, not tangible. I guess that's probably the wrong word there, but you know what I mean, like actually grab a hold of and go, "Oh crap, uh-huh. you can do this," you know. Which is why I always, well, not always, but for the longest time, have preached is preached, you know, just leading by example, you know. Sure, can you get these like little, what people think are victories through certain political means? No, oh, they're appeasements. That's what. That's all they are. Yeah. They're appeasements. Yeah, it really is. And 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 as I've always as as I've always tried to emphasize, even if you get a victory in in that realm, whether it be getting a particular candidate, you know, that you think won't possibly do any of these horrible things that the rest of them are doing or whether you get some local ordinance uh, taken down or like, you know, the speed cameras get taken away, like whatever, like all these little things, like all you're like, you're getting this victory as you see it. But what you're really doing is proving to all the other people involved (laughs) that the system works if they just all work together. <laughs> so you're actually setting the real cause of freedom back because you're exactly. you, instead of convincing the people that need to be convinced that you're that you can uh that, that we can live without this government you're you're convincing of that not not only are you re- reaffirming the fact that it's necessary you're also reaffirming that oh it works and and if we just group together, <laughs> and that's how that's how more horrible things end up happening later on, because those same people start re- start getting power hungry, just like anybody else, and going, "Oh, we can have this happen. We can have this change." And it's never for the good. <laughs> no, it's never for the good. Hell, the the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Well, as Lou Fien right? says, as Lou Fien says, and I and I memed at one point years ago, hell is paved with government intentions. Because yes, the road to hell, yeah. because that's what it really is, man. People with these, yeah. you know, that's what what happens. I love Lou. Lou Lou has Lou has one of my f- <sighs> Lou has one of my favorite ideas, or or not favorite idea. It's I don't want to say that's idea, but it's it's a theory. Um, you know, somebody somebody I think it was Shane Radliff. Shane Radliff re- relayed the story to me, and he said somebody asked Lou. Uh, uh, somebody asked Lou, like, uh, what's 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 the greatest thing that we can do for freedom? And Lou said something along the lines of grow government, right? Like government government reached a point for for you or I. Government reached a point in which we said that is enough, right? Like the gov- government is, government is too big; it has crossed our line in the sand. This is why we're anarchists because the government did this. So the 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 bigger that government gets the more oppressive that government gets the more people that become exposed to the truth of government and the more people that start to be against government if that makes sense yeah i mean i've yeah i've heard that before and in, in some regards it's, it's I, not i think i think i think he has a point um uh, it, a, a lot of people are gonna get hurt along not, the way it's it's not something I want to put into it's 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 not something that I want to put in, in into action, but well, it's, it's an interesting theory and it's not wrong. Yeah, I'm so saying I don't I don't think it's necessarily wrong either, but it's you know in in order to do so, that's kind of like it, people who would want to put that into action are all trying to assume the martyr role almost because it's like you know you're going to get steamrolled in the process. <laughs> um, but you know you got you got to do it for the for the next generation type of thing. It's like yeah, let's let's ramp up the level of fascism to I don't know eleven and a half. Let's see how that goes for a while, and um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, I don't really want to live through that either. I mean, I I think it's I think it's, it's, yeah, it's I don't. bad enough on certain levels, and and of course, as I pointed out, you know, I I I learn daily from what government what they can do and make things makes your life even more living hell just through stupid things that they do, um, and their own inefficiency. Uh, it, just and that's now. I can't, I can't imagine how much worse it would be if uh, you know I th- actually if 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 government were more even more ramped up before everything started for me at at the very least it probably would have been over by now because I probably would have been 
been either executed or at least locked up, uh, you know, months ago. And, uh, you know, at least the, the trial part would have, you know, I wouldn't have wasted all that time, you know, so. Just just, just think about how jacked you would have got when you're shoveling that, you know, shoveling in the salt mines. Yeah, there you You'd go. You've been okay. That's the, uh, the, the, the the one positive, right? Not, not, nothing to do but read book, book, books and <laughs> we'll read books, work out, and uh, try to protect my cornhole in the shower, you know? So. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah that's, yeah i i that's that's not that's not something i want to live through either i would rather start building the second realm and 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 try to limit my coercion you know limit my exposure to to the coercion uh as much as possible uh through through vano and and second realm black black market white markets trying to uh get as far as away from the government as possible no, and and I I'm under no illusion. Like I know the government's not going to go away in my lifetime. I know I'll never see the level of freedom in which I would like to live, but I still have hope for my children, which is why I still still do all the things that I do, um, because I want them to know freedom, and I want my eventual grandchildren to know freedom. Yeah, same here, man. Oh, I mean. Uh... <laughs> I, I I mean I certain certain times I certain times I act like that's not the case, but yeah, deep deep down I know that's 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 usually uh, why I continue to do pretty much everything I do. That's always that's always the reason in the back of my mind. It's like yep, that's why I'm doing it. Uh, but although but I I am definitely through things like learning about Vanu and stuff like that. I'm definitely more energized re-energized now to try to obtain as much as i possibly can in my lifetime and you know not just accept the fate that i'm not going to see it and hope you know and, and hope that and, and just try to prepare my children and hope they get get a you know better shot at it ask her that i think i think there's there's still opportunities to take it right now and uh you know, you may have to make what are what some would consider sacrifices along the way but you know I don't see anything wrong with sacrificing pretty much at mo most things, especially material things when it comes to obtaining actual freedom, you know, and if you're anybody who has been in this community for a long enough time and talks about all these things, then why the hell wouldn't you want to be trying to obtain these things? So, you know, for the, for those who want to keep playing the political game, you know, that's fine. I mean, sure. Like I've said before, when, when certain things, like if certain taxes are cut or a certain bill gets repealed or whatever, it, you know, whatever it is, you know, yeah. am I, am I going to, <laughs> am I going to freak out and say, no, I don't accept this positive outcome. No, you must do the other thing. No. Well, okay, great. I'll take, I guess I'll quote unquote, take it. But like I said, yeah, it's, overall, it's, 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 I think it's, I think it's, I think it's a net negative. For all the good it may do in the short term for you personally or other people personally, in the long term, it's just it's setting the cause back as far as I see it because you're just convincing people to use the system again instead of actually getting out of the system. So that's why I'm all about also trying to get as far away from government as possible and still try to find a way to be uh, a productive member of my community that so that uh, supplies something to them Uh and hopefully outside my community as well, uh, but that that uh, they find value in, so I can continue to uh, you know support my family, and uh, you know be be a part of something without having to go through government and show people that yeah you can do all these things, you just have to you know you put in a little work and ooh look at that. <laughs> yep, it is it is it is possible. It very much is possible in my opinion. Um, political crusading. Congratulations, you scored a goal. You're still down like. 700,000 to three. <laughs> You're not going to win that game through political crusading. Um, and, and as you said, yeah, it, it does, it does have a setback, right? That there is, there is a little bit of blowback from that small success, which is again, another reason that you're never going to change the system from the inside. You're never going to be able to vote yourself more freedom. You're never going to have a, a quote great man you're never going to have a great man sitting in the sitting in the white house right kokesh is never going to be president you're not going to have a libertarian president ever it's not going to work even gary johnson gary johnson let's right, i'm not going to get into gary johnson <laughs> but you're, <laughs> you're never you're never a, a person that truly understands freedom 
is never going to make it into a position of power in a system that is designed to suppress freedom. Period. It 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 simply it simply won't happen. So the options are either fight the system, which we can do to a certain degree without hurting ourselves, or to seek your own freedom uh, and and try to live as free and free as possible in this in the system that we have now, which is again what what you're trying to do with with the move to Indiana and what Shane is Shane is trying to do when when he starts to to build his van and become v- van nomad, and it's 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 what a lot of us are are trying to do to to a certain degree when we. When we exercise, when we when we purchase in the black market or or the gray markets or or you know through the through the tour network offline, um, or or homesteading and and all these little intentional communities and the the freedom cells that we have set up, those are those are all those are all a hell of a lot more effective. No matter how small they be, they're more effective than than voting or or the great man theory or political crusading or petitioning or or any sort of act of civil disobedience you're you're not going to gain freedom by anything that has to go through government period it's it's it you you it's simply it's it's an oxymoron to get freedom from your oppressor <laughs> yeah they uh if anything, they all they do is just relax the leash just a little bit to make you think, you know. Get, they, yeah. they, well, most often, they just give you they give you back a little bit of what they took originally, and then and then uh, then convince you to thank them for it, uh, as if you ne- <laughs> as if you never had it to begin with. So. But, uh, yes. One, wonderful, yeah, wonderful bunch point. of those people. Anyway, on that note, yeah. we should probably get wrapping up. But uh, yeah, man, this this has been great. Uh, Glad, uh, I'm glad we finally got got to sit down and do this. Uh, anything else you want to say in clo- closing before we go? Not just I. I love. I absolutely love that you're having the one-on-one conversations now. Um, seeds is cool, but there's other factors there at play that distract from the conversation. I'm just. I'm excited that you're doing one-on-one because you are. One of my favorite people to listen to, one of my favorite anarcho philosophers, I guess you would say. <laughs> yeah, and uh, anarcho windbag, whatever. I, I, yeah, I'm I'm grateful that you're doing this. So so thank you for doing this. Thank you for having me on on short notice like this. And uh, no, no. yeah, this was this was a lot. This went a lot better and a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Well, you know, you, you you've obviously you should be plenty comfortable now. You you know, you're co-hosting a podcast, man. Uh, you co- two actually, don't you? you two two podcasts. Yeah, yeah, there you go. You should be you should be plenty comfortable now. But uh, yeah, no, uh, yeah, I did, I did it again. <laughs> I started to say yeah, no. I really got to not get that out of my vocabulary because it's a pet peeve of mine. I hate when other people do it because I'm like, you realize how ridiculous you sound, and then I go ahead and say it. But I am enjoying this uh, format as well. You know, I, I've discussed it before. You know, the whole reason I went this way in the first place. And well, some of it does have to do with the seeds, but I'm pretty sure Dave's never going to listen to this anyway. So whatever, uh, <laughs> I I've talked about this openly. Yeah, yeah. You know, unfortunately, it's well, fortunately for me, I actually have an easier time getting people scheduled to do this show than I do to get to do the seeds, uh, which is why we're still lagging in the guest department over there. I've had a bunch of people who said they were going to get lined up and haven't been able to set them up for this show though i i, I have people knocking down my door it's great <laughs> people like you keep contacting me going hey man do you have anybody set up? i want to i want to have a talk i'm like all right cool you know <laughs> so i am uh, i'm glad you're i'm glad uh you're getting value out of it because uh heck that's why i do it just so somebody somebody appreciates this stuff i figure so i figure somebody has to because I, I keep getting uh, enough listeners that you know i know people are i know people are listening so <laughs> Or at the very least, downloading it. So even if you're not listening, thanks for that. <laughs> that makes me keep going. So, yeah, but uh, yeah, of course you're welcome. You know, you've done plenty of stints on the seeds with us, so you're of course welcome anytime. And it's it's always good to have a conversation with you anyway. And yeah, I, I much rather do it here than when I have to get interrupted by Dave and horrible segues, uh, and just uh, or just you know letting other people speak, which you know I don't have a problem with necessarily. But yeah, it definitely cuts the flow of conversations and. I much prefer to let people have a 
big, uh, more of a platform here to just talk, talk at a longer length about what they have to say. Of course, you know, without me butting in as, you know, I, I try to restrain myself, but, you know, obviously I can't hold back too much. <laughs> but when I do allow you to speak, I do. I like to allow people. Well, I, I, I like, to, uh, like to allow people longer time than I do on the seat. So th- there's that. But anyway, yeah, man. So this has been great. Thank you for joining us. Uh, joining us, joining me, Jesus Christ. See, we got to, got me talking about the seeds. I forgot where the hell I was for a second. Anyway, <laughs> thank you everybody else for listening. This has been the uh, the, the yeah. See, God damn it, I almost did it again. <laughs> this has been Appalachianist <laughs> Abstractions. Um, although, of course, all my stuff can still be found at solpodcast.org because, uh, well, I still don't have my own website for this because why am I going to bother? I already have one set up for that. Uh, or you can go to steam it, sla- uh, steam it dot com slash at abolitionist j where this is all- actually this is usually posted there first so you can go find the you can go find this episode there um, or all the other episodes anyway so once again thank you everybody for listening thank you jason and I'll catch you next time peace love peace and voluntary interactions for all Cell 411 is a great free app for Android and iPhone. It allows you to set up public and private cells for dealing with crime, emergencies, setting up neighborhood watch, activism, and even protecting your kids from bullies on the street or at school. Cell 411 gives your cells turn-by-turn directions to your location with one touch on your phone. There is also a Bluetooth panic button available that can be worn on your wrist, belt, or around your neck. Cell 411 has real-time chat for each alert so you can discuss the incident with family or friends in real-time video streaming. The video is stored on Cell 411's servers so your evidence cannot be deleted if your phone is taken or destroyed. Cell 411 has decentralized ride-sharing that allows for payment in any form – crypto, barter, silver, cash, etc. Cell 411 does not take a cut of your fare. Get Cell 411 free on Google Play and the iTunes Store. Or go to GetCell411.com. That's GetCell411.com.